is this thing working? Why am I getting buzzes now? Oh, that's just me telling me I'm going live. Uh, right, hello. I'm not sure if anybody can... Where are you? Over there. Hello. If anyone can see or hear me, this is... I'm playing with new tech and I don't really understand it, but I have my computer in front of me where I can see me, because I'm seeing the live view. You're here. Computer's there. Craft is here. So we're going to try and make this work. This is going to be an interesting experience. Can someone, if there's anyone around yet, uh, can someone shout if they can see me? Why can't I close that? Don't, don't add tools, don't do anything like that. Ugh. What is going on? There are too many buttons, and I don't know what's going on. Right, blow that up. Fine, 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 that's that, that's that, that's that. I do not know what I'm doing. Right. Anyway, yes, so about three minutes ago we had a little bit of an issue that the uh, um, mechanical balancing, what the hell is it called? Gimbal. The gimbal that I was using to hold my phone, which is what I'm streaming from, um, decided to die on me. It decided it didn't like the weight of my phone, it didn't like the uh, the angle of anything, and it just went nope and shut down and won't. And it turns back on, but it doesn't resume any sort of position. So, in three minutes, I have jerry rigged my phone to my tripod, to the vertical part of my tripod with a few bits of string. And I have above the tripod, I have the big camera going, which I can't connect to the live stream because I don't know how. Um, I think I needed like a camera capture card to put this into the computer and then run everything through the computer. But if I do that, I can't be in more than one place at once. I have to use the phone with a re-sharer thing. Anyway, this is exciting. It's a new experience. We're going to try a thing, but we should probably start this off correctly. Hi. I'm Andrew of White Wolf Wildlife, and uh, thank you for joining here today on the live. We're going to be trying to make little dragonflies. Now, I have drawn some very terrible little pictures of dragonflies. These are not meant to be artistic. These are purely meant to give me sort of ratios and aspects. So here's the side view of the broad body chaser. Here is the top view of said broad body chaser. So that I have, uh, basically, you know, how wide it has to be, how deep it has to be. And then here I have already drawn on the popsicle sticks ooh, a couple sets of wings. Front wings and back, wing, back wings, because the dragonflies have four wings. And we're going to be trying to make this. We're going to be trying to use the rotary tool. I've not used one of these before, but it goes buzz around really fast three times, three speeds, and I have this little block of wood which I have selected to be my broad body chaser. As you see I've already cut the bottom off and you might be able to see, I don't know if you can see, the computer is slower than me. Uh, I've already started drawing some sort of rough designs and also high low points. Um, I also cut this piece of wood perfectly to length which means it's going to be difficult to hold without cutting my fingers open. So I put a little screw in the end, which I can hold on to. And I've got my big pliers to hold on to it as well. So that's what we're trying to do today. That's the uh, crafting objective that we're going to try and do. And we're also going to talk about fun facts. Now, oh, I, I understand. OK, I can see the comment threads on both YouTube and Facebook, which is where everyone should be going because there's nowhere else to be. But yes, so yes, we have a full pot of tea, we have a packet of biscuits, and we will keep doing this up until the point that either my shoulder gives up, which may or may not happen, I did have surgery five weeks ago, until the Dremel dies, or until I run out of tea, basically, and I have a full pot, so it should be good on the tea front. But that basically means we're here for an indeterminate length of time, to just hang out and chat about wildlifey stuff. So, I'm going to start making my carvings because that's what I'm here to do today. I'm going to grab my gloves as well. Yeah. 
Safety first. Yes, and girls. Safety first. Right. We have gloves. I am going to wear a glove on my non-tool hand. Um, just because I don't want to... Because these are little, like, diamond bit cutters. And I've got, like, a whole array of shapes with them. And I've got a number of different grinding wheels and stuff like that in there. And some of these are really spiky. So I don't want them going in my hand. So, safety first. I'm going to make a start on this. And if anyone pops in and says hello... Um, drop me a favourite animal and I'll start doing some fun facts and we'll talk about whatever wildlife thing you want to talk about. If you heard something interesting in the news, if you want a fun story, um, yeah, whatever you want, drop me a message. I'm going to write that as well for people who come a bit later. I'm going to take my glove off to do it. Right. Crafting begins. Now just copy across and drop in the other one. Huzzah. Right, back to the glove. I thought this was probably the healthier option, you know, sitting here talking to you guys. I'm going to class it as healthier than sitting here talking to myself. So we're going to go with it. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to deal with the height elements of our broad body chaser. So this is our, our side view. And I'm going to make this piece of wood kind of match up to those different heights that we've got. So I've marked on the top of it uh, between these two dark lines is the highest point. And then I know in front of this, I can drop quite a long way. And I've got a, a marker on the side to say how far to get to the head height. And then this back piece behind the uh, charcoal, behind the pencil line, will be a slow gradient down towards the bottom. Uh, and I've got a mark on the back as well, above the screw, as to how low I want that to come at the end. So, yes, we're going to do something like this. We're going to start off with a flat bit grinder. Say so I've not used one of these before, but flat seems sensible for going down. So we're going to do that. I'm going to get a piece of paper to cover my laptop. Because I have my laptop there all exposed, let's put a couple pieces of paper over the keys, which means I'll be a little bit slower to type. But that's okay, because I'm not typing, I'm talking, and you guys are typing, hopefully to say hello. Do you have any idea? Can you see anything of what I'm doing if I do things like this? If I turn, can you see better? Yes, okay. Right. Better grip. Okay. That's going to take quite a long time. Is there a better tool for this? Flat grinding down, or do I try and cut down and then chisel off? Do I have a cutter? Do I have a cutting head somewhere? Let's look in the box of goodies, which I can't open. There we are. Right, drill bits, saw blade. That looks terrifying. I'm guessing saw blade goes with that thing. saw blade away for a second because I don't want to use a the saw blade when I'm first trying this thing out. Let's try using the edge of this. Okay, 
That made a mark. Don't scratch the table. Jumpy. I'm going to put the other glove on. <sighs> I have no idea how this sounds to you guys. If anyone has a, a bead on how badly this machine sounds over the, uh, over the mic system. Halfway there. Why is my phone buzzing? I don't know why my phone's buzzing. And I'm not going to look, that would disturb you guys. first little bit nodged down so that's going to be where the head goes I'm now going to start nodging down this back piece and then we're going to start coming in on the side with our side template and doing a bit more goes like this uh, doing a bit more detail like slopes as opposed to just blocks so we're going to do blocks first then slopes yes but we're going to be careful because it's easier to make things smaller and remove more material than it is to add more material later. Because I don't have that much glue. Jumpy. Let's do this one. Let's grab a hold of this thing. So, yes. What is White Wolf doing? I can talk about that. Well, currently, White Wolf is recovering. Uh, as I say, I had a shoulder surgery about five weeks ago. It's been a long-term issue, which I finally had time to get fixed. Um, in the early part of this year, I was working for Svensson the Tour Board, uh, so it's a conservation contractor company who we work with conservation forestry, in effect, um, 
removing invasive species from certain woodlands around the Uppsala area. We, have, we took a bit of break over the summer, um, hoping to get a contract in the autumn, uh, but in the meantime it gave me three months to recover from shoulder surgery. So basically they just put my shoulder back together because it wasn't quite together enough. Um, and that's me being not too technical about it, of course. Let's change that. Yeah, it's it's jumping too quickly. Um, so yeah, that's why we're not doing so many tours at the moment, because I'm not allowed to carry a backpack, is one of the primary reasons. Um, or paddle a canoe, obviously, which would be what I'd love to be doing this summer. It's been a wonderful summer for canoeing, and uh, there are some good people doing canoeing instead. So I have been making collaborations. That's what White Wolf has been up to. We've been making collaborations. We've been finding people to work with. We've been finding organizations and providers and friends who do awesome and amazing things. And uh, yeah, putting together some plans. One such plan at the moment in a video and a particular video that I'm working on at the moment. Can you hear me talking over that thing? I'm really not sure. It's probably going to sound horrible, isn't it? Um, in the autumn, I we will be doing, I say we, myself and a French entrepreneur called Agnes of Nordiska Orta. You, if you follow me on any of the social medias, you see that I post about Nordiska Orta quite a lot. We will be doing a willow basket weaving course from October to December, four sessions, one session every three weeks, exact dates, uh, locations and price to be confirmed. This is still stuff we're sorting out, so hopefully we'll be getting that information out in the next, well, before the end of this month, ideally. Um, so that's something we're really looking forward to. So yeah, I am currently in the process of making a basket. I'm not going to show you now, no sneak peeks. Um, which we're using as part of that course. So, yes, that's an exciting one. And, um, uh, other collaborators, so we have another friend, Audrey, who is called for Vilda Naturen. Um, I'm butchering these names because they're both French ladies who are writing in Swedish and I'm the Britishman in the middle and I don't know what the hell's going on. Audrey is doing a lot of uh, canoeing and kayaking adventures at the moment, both with Active Little Leave in Sunasta, Uppsala, and with Sport Adventure Travels up in Ensta, just north of Uppsala, both on the Fyrison. Um, which is the river in Uppsala, and uh, yeah, so Audrey's got a kayaking tour on the 27th of July, that should be a good one, uh, and as I say, Agnes has got various talks at Beatopia, and then Agnes and I are sharing a willow weaving course at the end of the year, in the autumn. So now I'm trying to make a slope, so from this high ridge it's going to slope back gently with a slight back kick up, so it's almost like a, a banana curve, but it's going to be lower at the bottom end, it's going to be much thinner at the bottom end. I've got to go down four, five, five mil, four, four, four to five millimetres at this very back and then kind of keep it angled off to the top, so it's kind of like that line. Let's pencil that on. And we are, yeah, uh, so that's what we're doing in terms of collaborations. In terms of what we're doing for us, you know, as White Wolf, 
uh, we are starting a few courses in the autumn. So we're going to be doing some like this, but not necessarily carving and artistic crafting this, but uh, more bushcraft, woodland, wood, uh, outdoorsman sort of crafting. Uh, we're going to be doing a few like woodworking workshops, uh, making things like buck saws and mallets and also other parts of your kit that you might need, including, depending on which uh, course you want to go to, we could be making backpacks, like uh, emergency backpacks, you know, uh, wooden frame backpacks, uh, snowshoes. Uh, we're going to be doing a whole plethora of things. I have six categories of woodworking and crafting uh, activities within my booklet. Uh, so there is like the general tools, the buck saw, the mallet, um, a good walking stick, because a good walking stick really is a quite useful tool, digging sticks, things like that. And also working through like the skill stick, which is where you do 13 different cuts on one stick to prove that you can do all of them in the correct fashion, uh, safely, quickly, and in a controlled space. So that's a good thing to try and do. We'll be doing that on most of our woodworking courses. Uh, snowshoe and then we've got transport things so snowshoes this autumn if we can get the materials and if we can sort of suss all out how to do it might be doing some raft and cocorical small basic boat builds i am not a boat builder um but i'm excited to try so we're going to be trying those we've got kits so it's like making a fire lighting kit making a water purifying kit making um bundles of cordage we're going to be doing cordages we're going to be doing containers as well so that's clay and uh willow so it'll be basket weaving it'll be clay pot making and um, you can even do some stone work in that if you wanted to we know how to do that we can show you how to do that and of course you've got the fun things the quote-unquote toys quote-unquote projectile weaponry uh dutch arrows swiss arrow dutch arrows sorry uh atlatls spears bolus things like that. Things you can throw at a dead tree and they stick in and that's good fun to play. Um, when we do our corporate events it's quite popular to do the Dutch arrow throwing. Dutch arrows are really quick to make. I might do that on here at some point. They're really quick to make, they're really fun to throw. You can get a fairly good distance on them with just a, a stick that's the length of your arm or shorter and a shoelace. That's all you need really. Old milk cartons help. So yeah, in the autumn we'll be doing those. I thought it wasn't going to turn on then, that was going to say. And then after this autumn, so we're going into next year, 2024, what's 2024 going to be looking like? We are going to start a one year bushcraft course. So this will be a course that takes place over a period of 12 months. 
we'll be meeting once a month. Uh, normally for a day, there are three sessions that will be overnighters, where we'll be camping out for the night. So there'll be a Saturday to Sunday type affair. Um, so that's a one year bushcraft course. We'll be covering everything in every season. So shelter building, fire building, uh, tracking, construction of tools and equipment, management of tools and equipment, modes of transport, navigation. I'm really excited for it. I've, it's filled up so many pages of my notebook now. So that is something that we are going to be officially launching. But well, now, now that I'm telling you about it, this is it. This is kind of like what we're getting to. Um, that's what's going to be happening next year. Again, it's taking a little bit of time to sort out some of the details. I have now secured a woodland which I can use. I have access to um, four courses and events where I can also gather materials freely. Um, so that is very exciting. But yeah, we have a, a woodland mm -hmm. space we can access. I am getting a text, but I'm not seeing any messages in any of my... I'm going to go behind the camera and just see who's messaging me about what, or if it's just my phone panicking about data usage. They are things that can wait. It's always that concern when you hear the buzz, the, it buzz three times, you're like, uh, is that something important? Uh, what was I talking about? Yes, we have access to a woodland, which is very exciting, very cool, and I'm very uh, grateful for that, so that'll be exciting. We have a space we can go and collect wood, uh, timber and materials and hang out. Uh, I can build within reason, I can collect within reason. You know, all at the discretion of the landlady, but it's uh, it sounds like it's going to be pretty flexible. So, yes, with that, we'll be able to uh, tackle, go head on onto this uh, one year bushcraft course. If you're interested in that, and you can drop me a message or just drop me a comment in this uh, screen, and I will message you with details that I have so far and I will be posting a link this weekend for the pre-registration uh, just the kind of that get the list of those who are interested uh, so I have rough ideas of how many numbers I'm looking at and I can give you guys more information directly as it's happening so this weekend we'll be launching the uh, pre-registration for the one year 12 month bushcraft course here in Uppsala Sweden so I think that sounds pretty exciting. I need to make that tail thinner as well for this dragonfly. Mm. Mm. <sighs> it's still buzzing. Right. Also got to be aware with this broad body chaser not to make the the tail entirely round because it's kind of like it's flat but it's kind of like wide so it's got these ridges at the sides um so i need to be aware of that so i'm getting a lot of dusty build up try and do it that's good the grain yeah it's nice Would this be quicker with a knife? I wanted to try and avoid using the knife today because when I do, my hands are close together and my shoulders crunch up. I'm trying to protect my shoulders, so I've got to keep my elbows loose. We can do a little bit with the knife. We can. 
We will just make these stop cuts, cuts and give me a depth to work with. This cut knife is good. Ben Alford's carving knife is better. Maybe we don't want to go too much further than that. It's a little hump and then it drops again. Yeah, okay, fine, this is good. Because we can just do this tidy up here. And that's that line kind of squared away. Messy, but accurate enough. Yeah, and then that little hump stays. And the rest of this just goes straight ham out. So that screw out so I don't smash my uh, blade on it. other craft projects on the floor. I say other craft projects like I'm cheating on this one, but uh, no, I've been doing other things as well whilst I've been sat in, sat in this cabin, whiling away my days, planning awesome things like courses and events and activities for you guys. Stay. Is that sticky? That feels sticky. Yeah, much faster. That's a bit too shallow a curve, we need more. So I'm going to come back in here. So I said I was going to explain why I'm carving dragonflies. Have you seen those videos of fish, particularly like the Mediterranean, where you get the nice clear water, you've got this nice big school of fish or a shoal of fish and they're all swimming around they're making those pretty shapes like weird underwater clouds and then a shark comes through and they kind of like form this bubble this space around it and the shark just passes through and the fish kind of rejoin together around it well obviously that's that's a prey's interaction with a predator and um yeah you see those videos all the time so yeah they kind of live in my head rent free it's just it's another cool animal interaction you see it and then I saw something kind of similar with dragonflies months ago, or it must have been years ago, I guess. Um, a dragonfly was kind of flying over a pond, and you know when you get those clouds of midges, those little like it looks like a little cloud of smoke, you know, just bobbing away in the in the sunlight. Well, that kind of had like a, a party, like a donut shape in the middle of it, as the dragonfly kind of flew past. Well, that was kind of, yeah, link thing, that's kind of funny. And then I saw on social media the other day, a woman walking around, and she had a little wooden dragonfly on her shoulder. And she said, ah, this keeps the mosquitoes away. And I was like, cool, does it? Hence I'm making wooden dragonflies. This is part of an experiment, not to shame on that person for their uh, ingenuity and their idea, but if it works... And making a little wooden dragonfly and sticking them on your what on a wire on your shoulder keeps the mosquitoes off your face. Well that to me sounds like a damn sight better than putting chemicals on my face. So that's why we're making dragonflies. And we're making three. We're gonna be making this one first, the broad body chaser. Uh, and we're gonna be doing it in the bronze variety, which is the female variety. Males are silver, females are brown. Fair bronze, I'm fairly certain that's correct. I will double check. We're doing this in the bronze variety. Then we're going to do the green emperor, which is a longer, thinner dragonfly, um, but arguably bigger in every dimension, uh, proportionally longer and thinner, more tubular, whereas this guy's more 
squid pancake at the back end. Um, and then we're also going to do one in red. So this will be bronze, the green emperor will be green blues, and then we'll have one in red. So, and we're going to put them on the shoulders on different days. And we're going to try and maintain some stabilities of uh, experiment. We're going to keep the location the same. We're going to keep the time of day the same. We're going to, as best as we can record, record the weather and ideally keep it fairly similar. Yeah. Similar wind speed, similar temperature, similar humidity. Uh, and we're going to do this all within a short period of time. So within literally three days of each other. Um, if those conditions are met. So that way we don't end up with a population uh, crash skewing our data. I'm going to try all three dragonflies and I'm going to count the number of times a mosquito buzzes near my ear or I flap my hands on a mosquito. That's the experiment. It's very basic, but if this works and we can utilize the phenomenon of predator-prey interactions and animal behavior to keep the mosquitoes off of my nose, then I will happily sit here online talking to you guys for a while, making some dragonflies. So I, am going to try, I do need to try and make these look fairly realistic as well, because I'm not certain what element of the dragonfly is recognisable to the midges and mosquitoes. I don't know what their eyesight's like. Um, not very well, at least I have a... Uh, I read some things and I remember some things, I don't remember it all, certainly. So that's why I'm doing the three colours. We're doing the three colours. There are also three... well, we need to work out which one the red one is still. But the green and the bronze are fairly dif distinct shapes. Um, they will all be articulated in some fashion, articulated? augmented in some fashion, so that the wings, when I cut those out, will be attached to the body with wires. So that way, when it's walking around, the wings kind of can do a little, little flippy flap as they go. And then it itself will be on a wire. Keep the other on a wire on the shoulder, so it's kind of bobbing. So we're going to end up with a, quite a lot of different bits of motion. So is it the motion that will scare them? Is it the colour that will scare them? Is it the shape of the predator that will scare them? Um, if it scares them at all. And is it fear or is it just convenience? You know, oh, we won't go there because it's less convenient because there's a predator. Yeah, and I'm not going to be able to measure that. Uh, we're not doing stress hormones or anything like that in mosquitoes, none of that. No, we're making dragonflies to keep the mosquitoes off my face and we're going to see if it works. And if it does, we're going to say, great, and we're going to make more dragonflies. That is why I have various bits of different length and different dryness and different uh, texture. Different species of wood, timber. Yeah. Uh, Sorry guys, this stuff is all new to me, so if I see something interesting on the laptop, I'll have a, I have to have a quick look at it. I've done live streams before on the back end of Beatopia's system when I was behind the camera on the occasion. Um, which is good fun, but someone else set it all up and I just turn the machine on and point the camera in the right place. So Anyway, we were taking this tail down. So we need to set the sides down a bit more. More at that angle, I think. Yes, middle of the hold. That would be a good place to look at the sides. Not quite sharp for now. Let's just smooth off that interaction just so it's not so dramatic. Good. Don't touch that side anymore. There is a point when you make a cut and you look and think, oh, I could do one more. If I ever get that, oh, just one more feeling, I don't do it. Because the number of times I've done some anything with a knife, and I go, oh, just one more. And it ends up a disaster. I end up splitting a piece off the, off the grain or bleeding. Never just one more. Leave it alone. But I'm going to do the other side. See if I can get it looking similar.
Dragonflies are interesting animals. Uh, I'm not sure I like that one so much. I just need to bring it further up. I said, Dragonflies are interesting animals. They underwater in a larval stage called a nymph. Um, called a nymph. M N Y P. I'm not going to try and spell it. N Y. I'm missing a letter somewhere. I think it's an E at the end. Uh, they, they live underwater for a, a few years, actually. Yeah. Depending on the species, it could be two to four years underwater as a nymph, which is a really aggressive looking prehistoric beast. Um, they have these great big pincery mouth pieces. They've got, uh, got six strong legs. And they've got this long tail, not long tail, but you know, they have a tail behind those legs with like little spikes in it. Um, little sort of spikes coming out the end of it. It looks like stingers. So they've got pincers at the front, stingers at the back. They're not actually stingers, they just look like it. And they are one of the most ferocious predators in the underwater ecosystem. Honestly, uh, when we started getting... We, we had a pond in my mother's garden when I was living back in England. She still has the pond. I'm not living in England. Um where you where, where we had tadpoles we had frogs they, they would come in every spring do their thing and then there'd be tadpoles and then eventually they'd come out to be little frogs and mowing the grass became a whole lot more difficult because you're starting to push really slowly because the little things are jumping in front of you doesn't matter we had frogs we had tadpoles uh, and then we got newts and then we got newts newts are also very hungry and newts eat a lot of tadpoles but I think why we started seeing declines in certain years of tadpole populations was not to do with the newts, because there weren't that many of them, and they don't breed, they breed fairly fast, but they don't breed that fast, and the pond wasn't in that good a condition. It was all right for them, they were living there. But we did see more dragonflies around. And this is specific to dragonflies, not dragonflies and damselflies. We're not really talking about damselflies today, we're mostly on the dragonflies. I started this fact, I'm trying to remember the number of how many tadpoles a dragonfly larvae could eat in a day. It's a ridiculous number. They eat a lot. Um, so yeah, they. I believe they can actually... You know, there's a lot of different facts going on here, and I'm going to try and like line them all up. So dragonfly larvae are in the water, and they eat things, and then when they... They eat a lot of things. They eat everything. A lot of everything. Um, bad combo, if you want to have a nice rich biodiver biodiverse underwater world don't have dragonflies newts and goldfish those are the three worst things you can put in a pond uh, dragonflies you can't help them make their own way newts will probably make their own way keep the goldfish out of it they're a bad thing to put in that ecosystem they will eat anything everything uh, from algae and duckweed and stuff to your tadpoles to probably even your newts if you've got goldfish that got big enough and they do get big enough so leave the goldfish out of it. When it is time for the dragonfly to emerge, two or four years after it's been underwater, steadily growing in size as well, maintaining its nymph form, you know, six legs, a tail, no wings, and a big head with a big pincy teeth, it will decide that it is time for it to emerge, and it'll go through this emergent process where it will find a stalk of grass or reed or my goodness gracious kicking cameras now that's never good um and they will climb up it until they're above the waterline you see it a lot on piers and bridges where they've got like structures down into the water you'll find dragonfly larvae climbing up there then they'll stop they'll dehydrate the exoskeleton and it'll crack open and then out emerge will be the big long dragonfly much bigger than this little chrysalis It'll pump its tail full of uh, hydraulic fluid, not hydraulic fluid, but the biological version of, and I can't remember what that's called. Then it's wings, and it'll look beautiful and magnificent and powerful, and then it goes off and it eats everything. They don't stop eating. There are some species of dragonfly that don't eat when they're an adult. That is a lie. I was thinking of butterflies. There are a few species of butterflies and moth that don't eat as adults. They just mate, breed, mate, lay, and die. Dragonflies, I think they all eat, um, and they eat a lot. That is 
good enough. But I'm pretty much going to take that down just a little bit up here. Um, do you want to? Yes. And then you see this lovely, you probably see it more in damselflies because damselflies are pretty easy to spot and they do a very beautiful version of this. When you get those flying sidewards love hearts flying through the air, that is when two animals are connected. Two dragonflies or damselflies are connected. And what it is, is one dragonfly has in the back of its head, think of it like the buckle for a seatbelt. And the other dragonfly has the seatbelt metal part on his tail. Anyway, it goes along and did it clicks it. It's now locked in. It, it, it's a jigsaw piece that fits so well once they're in, they're locked. They can't come apart. Um, I believe they can't come apart immediately at least. They have to have a sort of reaction to release. Um, and then the one underneath kind of curls itself up and reaches into the what would we would look at it and say the abdomen area. Um, the belly area of the upper, the top dragonfly, damselfly. And this, I think I remember, was the wrong way around for what makes logical sense. And I did look this up before. Yeah, so the female, that was it. I do remember correctly. Cool. Yeah, so out of that too, so you got the one that connects into the back of the head, i.e. the top one jams its tail into the head of the bottom one. So the top one is male, the bottom one is female. And then she, do it like this, then she puts her tail up into his abdomen uh, and therefore collects the sperm uh, into her ovipositor thing at the end of the tail where she has you know if she fertilizes the eggs and then he doesn't let go he keeps that claw on the back of her head um all the way until she has finished laying eggs which is the other part you see you'll see two dragonflies going around in a chain one on top of the other connected by the tail to head and the bottom one as it's going will look like it's doing abdominal crunches it'll be flicking its legs legs tail up it'll be how do I do this? So it's going along. This is the tail. That's the head. Good. Like this. Put it back on over here. I can see the camera now, so I can check that that is in frame and as stupid as I think it is. Yes, it is. Um, and by doing so, what they're doing, every time they crunch, they're shooting a little egg out. And they're aiming for vegetation in the water. Um, or rock any any underwater structure that they can connect an egg to because the eggs come out they're sticky they hit the water they go through the water they stick to something and they stay there and that's it there is no real parental involvement at all after that point and once the female's done all that the male will let them go you can just unclick that little hook and they split they're off they're free um yeah and then we have the egg who grows up to be, who after a little while hatches, uh, grows up to be a very hungry teenage dragonfly living underwater, you know, wearing his big scars and getting into fights, I'm sure, with the bigger fish, uh, before emerging to be the big, beautiful dragonflies, as we call them. Which kind of makes sense. They do look kind of archaic, which I like. Right.
Now I'm just going around rough shaping whatever I think looks easy for me to process, whatever I think might be easy enough to do some damage to. Something, I need something with an edge. I put on a rounded head one, so that's what I get smoother curves. But that wasn't right. I need something. You know, I do go back to the block. Oh, you're, you're a bit smaller actually. You're a bit more workable. I'll take you instead. Right, let's just smooth this off and stop and think about it for a second before I do something stupid. So we've just taken the head down, but I'm not taking it too far because I want to leave eyes on either side. 
big ones, kind of you know, actually full round of what's left here. Leave them exposed. The material between the eyes needs to come. We can take that in there just a little bit with that spiked tip. And underneath, well, I need to flatten that out because that's too much. Let me just take that up there. In the right corner. And the same as this there. And we're just doing a line, just kind of deep line right down the middle. There. There. And those eyes. Oh. How's everyone doing? Anyone else need a cup of tea yet? I might get around another cup of tea. Why's my pot still hot? I'm going to have to take this corner off before I forget what I was trying to do with it. Yeah. Okay, that looks like something to do with the mouth. Let's switch our blades and let this thing cool down for half a second. Mm, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? You suspect? Who's it for you? I don't know. What do you call it? There's a scrap of wood. Yeah, give me a spare now. Just like this. First T. Right. I am going to do a good job of vacuuming later. This is getting quite dusty in here. Uh, 310, 22. Okay. I return. Cool. Right, let's try and do these eyes then. Let's 
sweat this is going to hurt. They're so fine and fiddly. Maybe if I should put Hydrating snack whilst crafting people. It's important. It's a biscuit, that'll do. Got him with a knife. Yeah. I say I'm new to the rotary tools. The I keep calling it a Dremel. It's not a Dremel. It's a Chalk Max. I call it Dremel in the same way I call the vacuum cleaner a Hoover. I don't mean any. Um, infringement or copyright or whatever those words are. First time using one and I don't really know what the different blades do. I know the theory I have to do each cut. Just realise that on this space that was a long buzz. Was it a failed call? Oh my goodness gracious, why does everything keep going off? This was the wrong thing. That's the thing. It's not in there. It's where I reached here. This one I need. I knew it. But do I need to change the piece for it? I didn't do it. What am I doing wrong? Why can't I make that little cut? Because I, I want to make it a fine cut, but all the fine pointed, fine edged things are not making the cut because they're too fine. There is no teeth on that part because it's too fine. How do you make a back cut like that. I'd have to use the top of one of these. Going back to exactly where we started. 
do it that way. Yes, I have to go like on this side. I have to go there. That's how I get the back up the rays. Something like that, at least maybe. We'll do it like that. It means I think the eyes pop out a bit. I shouldn't be holding this thing so close to my face with its tendency to jump like that. But that's fine. <sighs> well, it's been an hour already. Time does fly. Well, that explains why I took up the tea anyway. It's not very round, but it looks like an eye. These things look nothing like what they want to. I don't know what I am doing. How happy you do this, do da, do da. Need to take the tail off, make the edges need to. Oh. I can leave that high and burn that down lower. That's a thing, that's a thing. Where's my piece of paper? Yeah, because the low stays low all the way across. That point comes down to here, all the way across. And that's my ridge. I'm going to take that bit off. Oh, where's that pencil? There. Good enough. Do -do 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 Oh no. Ben Orford. Oh, the other really exciting thing that's happening. I say ooh, not because I've forgotten. I say ooh because I've remembered that I haven't told you, but I think about it all the time because it is super exciting. I have a wonderful uh, company who is building me a website. Yes, we are getting a professionally done, very nice looking, I've seen the first draft, uh, website for White Wolf Wildlife, where we'll be highlighting all of the above mentioned courses, the autumn courses the of construction crafts and woodland work, and the habitat management courses, where we'll be looking at how to manage your own private little woodlands, the one-year bushcraft course, the willow weaving courses, the various workshops, highlights and lectures we do at Biotopia and other in education infrastructures or education facilities, and um, as well as our corporate team building events, which is the other side of what we do, 
we take corporate teams or teams from various offices and it works not just for offices but it works for classrooms and phd labs and birthdays we do the same we can do any we can handle these groups we can uh, make sure that you have a fun day in the nature something else well maybe that's just it i've got to make it thinner i've lost a little piece of paper no oh dear that was the only copy Yeah, sorry, uh, corporate team building days where we take people out of the office. We work on, we give them a set of challenges, a set of games, a set of competitions, which develop and help your team practice their communication skills, their teamwork skills, their cooperation and understanding, and just generally developing that sense of camaraderie, that uh, togetherness within your group. So we have a number of activities actually, which we have we are developing within that so not to give them all away i already mentioned the dutch arrow throwing that's a nice fun competition um blindfold tent building it is harder than you think you will have some number number of members on your team and all bar one will be blindfolded the one who is not blindfolded may not touch the tent and must purely direct the five roughly blindfolds folded individuals to build said tent and you'll do this in teams and the fastest team wins uh, and the team who does less damage to my tents gets bonus points that's a fun one uh, and then we've got various construction craft activities to do um, canoeing tours kayaking tours beaver tours we saw an otter recently on a beaver tour before i had my surgery I wanted one last Ura of uh, water sports for the summer because I was not going to be able to paddle again this summer. And I went out for a couple of days, well, one day uh, for a few hours, so from lunchtime through to sunset. And uh, on the final run up and down the river, on the last tour of the day, we had a beautiful animal pop up right, right near our boat. It got very close to us. We could see it very nicely and clearly. And we saw an otter, which is one of four mammals excluding bats and marine that is common and native to sweden that i have s yeah there are four that i haven't seen now that i've seen the otter that's down to three so there are three non-bat non-marine mammals in sweden left for me to see um so i am looking for those opportunities now there are some vagrant species like the golden jackal uh which i have not put on that list because they are vagrant they come and go um, and obviously the marines I don't spend enough time near the ocean I'm very far behind on my marines um, and bats as well because you know, licensing so if you have to find them and identify them you can use apps on your phone with small adapters and stuff which are quite good actually some of these uh, bat audio iPad connector things are very good Echo 2 I think is the latest one that I've heard about um, they're very good. I haven't got one. Uh, and normally I'd like to try and take photographs of things. Taking photographs of bats at night is very hard because my camera's not, well, it's not that, it's not that camera. It's not a nighttime camera to do fast imagery. Bats are fast. You know, you've got to focus, flash and snap all in one heartbeat. Can't do that with my cameras. Um, which means handling. And I can't do handling in this country. I can't do handling in the UK. I was training towards my bat license in the UK before I left. Because um, the bats are protected by European legislation. So that one will extend up here. Bring you down a bit further still. You've got to come down to about there. See, this one's frustrating because it's the wrong side for me to get a good hand on. Camera can't see what I'm doing because I'm cutting into the middle of my palm on the dark side. You can just not see there's a flash of white in my palm.
squirrels running on my veranda out of my out of my opening area. They just run, 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 clacking around as they do. You, know, you think there'd be some beast or maybe even a goat running up and down that wood walk. It's not. It's squirrels. It's always the squirrels because every time I look, it's the squirrels. So unless these particular sets of squirrels can shape shift. Okay, that beady eye and that slit in the mouth. If I put legs on this and did nothing else, I would be able to convince myself that is getting close. Yeah, you know, with the eye, the mouth split. I mean, it's not very, you know, it's not very well done, and you guys aren't going to see it very clearly. It's the light bad in here. I just noticed I got the window on my side. It should be your side. Come on. You can kind of see it. Um, I can convince myself that we're getting towards a dragonfly larvae here, which is probably a good place to be because dragonfly larvae become dragonflies, which is what we want. And it's around the back of that hump. Yeah, we're going to round that off, smooth that edge down in all directions. Point that. It's not there. Yep, got the mark. Make the mark better. Good. Uh, where do I want it to go? It seems that something is dying on me, and it's, I don't know if it's my phone or my Wi-Fi, but something's not doing a thing. Oh my goodness gracious. And also, all my screens are just jumping sideways. So that's just... Uh, Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I might actually call that here because I don't know what's going on. My laptop's getting a little bit warm. There's a lot to process. I'm streaming on two sites via one re-streamer thing, and I've got another camera going. And I'm not really talking that much. But, yes, just to uh, conclude what we're doing, we're making these little wooden dragonflies for the sake of an experiment. We're hoping to see, we're trying to see, if the appearance of a dragonfly or the model of a dragonfly near one shoulder will keep pest insects like mosquitoes off one's face and we're going to be trying three different colors we have the bronze the green and a red um, to see if there's different shapes and colors that have an effect on this and we're going to be doing this as kind of as standardized test as we can looking at the behavioral responses of the pest invertebrates uh, secondly we have a number of exciting things coming up, so most immediately in the summer, one of our collaborations is with Audrey of Favilda Naturen, and they are doing canoeing and kayaking tours. 
the camera's over here. They are doing canoeing and kayaking tours uh, this July and August. So check out their page. Uh, I think they're linked in a number of my posts. So you just scroll down to you see Audrey or kayaks or something like that. Uh, that's the page you're looking for, Vilda Naturin. Uh, obviously, and then also our collaboration with Agnes uh, from Nordiska Orta, doing the herbalism courses, the various workshops at Beatopia on edible plant berries, um, willow basket making, and then we'll be doing a big collaborative course in the autumn, four sessions, every, once every three weeks, uh, October, November, December. We were doing a willow weaving course. The pre-registration for that is already up. So if you go to Nordiska Orta or White Wolf's Instagram on the link in bio, you'll find the pre-registration link for the willow weaving course. This would be a fantastic gift to get someone. Uh, maybe a little bit early for Christmas, but it might be a great gift to get them so that they can get that done ready for the festive holidays and show off to all the family and in-laws when they come over something that they've made. Uh, following that, we'll be having uh, crafting courses with White Wolf in the autumn. We have a new woodland area secured where we can go and do some work and gather some materials. We'll be doing tools and uh, thrown weapons, kits like fire lighting kit, water purifying kit. And obviously when the winter comes and the snow comes, we'll be doing a lot of tracking. The tracking will be resuming and will be happening uh, when we get the snow. Following all of that come next spring uh, next April, April 2024, we will be starting a one-year bushcraft course. This will be one year, 12 months, uh, 13 sessions in 12 months, three overnight, 10-day uh, sessions, uh, and we will be covering everything that you would want to do outdoors during that period. We'll go canoeing, we'll be tracking animals, we'll be building shelters and fires and snowshoes and uh, navigating by the stars, navigating in general using different methods of navigation and we'll be doing a lot of various cool things in that. Uh, the one I'm particularly excited for and I might also run as a separate course is uh, pottery with wild clay, clay that you gather from a riverbank and make it into a pot. That stuff is really cool so we'll be doing some of that as well. But all of this, uh, my events Nordisk Autos events and possibly also uh, for Vilden Turin's events will be displayed on our new website which should be coming out any time now uh, and that will be very exciting and if you have a birthday party, a uh, collaborative, uh, a team or a group of people who you want to experience the nature with you can hit us up at any time you want at hello at whitewolfwildlife.se uh, you just kind of let us know roughly what you want and we'll take it from there, we'll work together, we'll make an amazing event for you to get out in the nature. So, yes. Yep, so this is about as far as we've got the dragonflies today. We're going to see if uh, we can get a bit further with that this evening. But I say my internet does look ish stable. But I am dropping bars and they're picking up again. I was going to show off some other crafty things that I've done. Oh. How well can you guys see this? I can't actually see any of my screens now. I need better lights in here. So this is a fire steel that I've been making. I have got 10, 12, 12 of these, 10 of these. Yeah, I have 13 of these ready to roll. So we have these bits of various antler, so antler from reindeer. Uh, with a ferrocium rod uh, and all of them will be coming as well with a saw blade striker so these will be something that I'll either be giving away in competitions within the tours or selling come the early autumn period I just need to put some epoxy in these ones and finish up carving some little runes and symbols in them but I am actually going to end all my live videos there guys uh, in the various platforms that you are so thank everyone for joining me it's been fun uh, working with this Choc Max rotary tool Dremel thing has been interesting, if not illuminating, if not slightly more challenging than I thought, I will confess. So I'm going to keep playing with this thing. I'm going to keep having a go. I'm going to make up some dragonflies and we'll, uh, we'll post some pictures on Instagram later. 
if you like this live format where you just it's me and you sitting down chatting, typing away, um, do let us know. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Tara. Let me stop this place.